Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. Let's let's get into some boxing talk, though. We saw um, Andy Ruiz return to the ring with a solid win over Chris Ariola. Floyd Mayweather has officially announced his return to the ring on June 6th against, uh, which Paul is he fighting? Jake Paul? Uh, Logan Paul. Logan, Logan Paul. I, yeah, I don't know which Paul is which Paul, but he, he's fighting. He, he ain't fighting Chris Paul. We know that. No, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> he, he ain't fighting that Paul. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but this, let's talk about Andy Ruiz and we get in some of the other boxing. What were your thoughts as you saw the fight unfold this week? And there's been speculation that because this was a title eliminator, that him and Deontay Wilder, great friend of the show, that might be in the works very soon as well. Um, I love it. I know um, uh, with Chris Ariola, I think, you know, I know he was a little frustrated after the fight. Um, he thought it should have been a lot closer uh, than what it was. But, I mean, listen, man, I thought we were for the for the good enough fight. And at the end of the day, if you don't want to feel like you're, you're getting robbed, then when you're in that ring, you put on a dominant performance so that you cannot be robbed. And this wasn't a situation, this wasn't a, a Pacquiao-Bradley situation. This wasn't the, the third judge in the Mayweather-Canelo um, fight that thought it was <laughs> it, it was not a unanimous decision that he clearly won that fight. I don't think it was, it was even that type of situation um, so, it, you know, it's to avoid, to avoid feeling the way you feel after the fight, then you got to go in there and you got to dominate from bell to bell. And, and, and even beyond that, knock somebody out. You knocked them down, but you didn't knock them out. You knock them out, it's over. You, we're not sitting up here having this conversation at the press conference. You're not feeling salty after the fight, you know? Um, I know he's, this is later in his career, it's probably going to be one of, if not his last fight. I don't know how much... He has left how much willingness he has to continue. Um, as far as Ruiz goes, I'd love to see him and, and Deontay fight. I don't know what's going on with with the the, the holy trio of, of heavyweight boxers right now uh, because Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua would you know were trying to jump the line on the the, the the third fight between Fury and Wilder, but they've been negotiating. But now Bob Arum is saying that the fight is dead in the water. So I don't know if we're going to get that. I don't know what's going on, but I do know I, I miss seeing the heavyweight division at its purest. And I know that Ruiz is somebody who's going to go in there and fight no matter what. I know that Deontay Wilder is somebody that's going to get in that ring and fight no matter what. These are two guys that are not scared to step into the ring with anybody win, lose, or draw. So I'm, I'm here for it. I want to see it. Uh, I hope that we can get all of these fights. I hope that we can get Fury, Joshua. I hope that we can get uh, Joshua Wilder. Hope that we can get Wilder Fury for the third time. You know, um, but we kind of got to sit back and see because, you know, boxing might be the most political of sports. Yeah, and the politics is, is taking over because unfortunately we were sold this idea of Tyson and Fury, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua fighting. And that's why we weren't getting the third Wilder Fury fight, right? That, that was the whole speculation that, oh, because they're going to fight, Wilder's got to wait. But yeah. now their fight is on hold. So it's like, all right, so then what was this negotiation that was supposed to be taking place? And why can't we get the third Wilder Fury fight then if you guys haven't come to an agreement there? You're after, absolutely right, though, about Ruiz. Ruiz loves to fight. He wants to get in there and mix it up. Uh, that's Chris my guy, man. I rock with Ruiz. Yeah, I, I like him for that reason. And, and, you know, Chris Ariola, I'm, I'm sorry. I know you, you had some strong words at the end of the fight, but after knocking him down in the second round and then you stumbled him in the third round, I thought Ruiz dominated the rest of the fight. Um, I don't have the official numbers in front of me, but I believe he landed something like 70 more punches throughout the totality of the fight. He was controlling the fight. Um, shout out to Eddie Reynoso in his camp. Um, you know, that's Canelo's trainer who now trains Ruiz because they had Ruiz doing some different things in the midway through that fight and boxing a little bit more, not lunging in so much. So I would love to see Ruiz against Wilder because, like you said, they're two guys who want to hurt you. They love the punch. They, they don't mind if they take a punch and throw in a punch. I think it would be highly entertaining. And 
you know, until either either Tyson Fury is going to have to come out and say, look, we're demanding to fight the best mm. or we're going to continue to see these politics take place. I know him and Joshua want to do it for the UK. They expect big money over there. But it's unfair to the fans that we had got to a point where we thought we were going to start seeing that. We thought yeah. we were going to start seeing the best heavyweights fight the best heavyweights. And now we're in standstill mode again because the guys who hold the belts are not fighting each other. So how is this any different than when the Klitschko brothers had the belts and they wouldn't fight each other? And yeah. they would just they would just cherry pick who they wanted to fight and where they wanted to fight them. At least I can respect their reason a little bit more. You know, they brothers. They brothers right. Y'all don't even like each other. What's the problem? Get in the ring, throw them hands, and whoever comes out on top comes out on top. It is what yeah. it is. You both got yeah. rematch clauses for your belts if you lose. So yeah. you go back in and fight them again. Like, let's just get this thing going, though. Yeah, absolutely, man. I got to throw you another curveball here, too. We didn't have it on the rundown. But uh, we talked about Floyd Mayweather and um, the Paul brother fighting in June, right? Um, there's been hints of Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson fighting. Lennox Lewis actually talked about it uh, earlier on that card of the Ruiz fight. But do you feel these exhibitions are overshadowing some big names? Because... We're hearing all this about Mayweather. We're hearing all this about Lennox possibly fighting against Mike Tyson and even Evander Holyfield supposed to be coming back. Miguel Cotto, who we talked about recently. But nobody's talk, really talking about Canelo fights this weekend. And there hasn't been much press around that. And then Teofimo Lopez, who might be one of the brightest young stars in the sport, is fighting June 5th, the day before Floyd Mayweather. But everybody's talking about Floyd. Do you feel the exhibition is starting to overshadow the young stars? Okay, so here's the thing. They are overshadowing the young stars, but that's because the young stars aren't fighting, <coughs> excuse me, other young stars. So if you had a situation where, let's say Canelo was fighting Triple G again, right? And both fighters have that star power, then I think you could compete with the Mayweather exhibition fight that's going down. Then you compete with the Tyson Lewis fight going down, but the average boxing fan, first of all, the average boxing fan, you know, probably doesn't even know who Teofimo uh, Lopez is just yet because he's not even a household name. Canelo is more of a household name, but he's he's not a, a Pacquiao. He's not a Floyd Mayweather. He's not that kind of a, of a household I think, name. Well, I think, I think Canelo is there. I agree with you on Teofimo. I think Canelo with the Mexican following and the fact that he's he's fought Floyd Mayweather and fought Triple G twice and fought uh, Miguel Cotto, I think household name he's there. I think my big issue with it is we're not seeing the same promotion behind it, and maybe that's why Tiafimo's going to Triller. And I agree with you. You you want it. Not only do you want to see the best fight, but then there's got to be that that push behind it. Are people interested? And that's where I think it is falling apart because if Jake Paul can get the millions of buys that he's got because Triller's pushing it. Why aren't these other promoters pushing these fighters then? Yeah, well, so even, all right, so, right, so if, let's just say today, the news was contracts are signed, Anthony Joshua is going to fight Tyson Fury. I don't think Mike Tyson versus Lennox Lewis exhibition fight can trump that. But we're not getting that fight. So that's the problem. Um, uh, I guess if, if we if we wind up getting... The Manny Pacquiao versus uh, Terrence Crawford. If that if that fight goes down, I think that probably would have been one that could withstand. But again, we're, if we're not getting the because what's the what's the the the, the biggest fight is uh, what is it? Errol Spence Jr. versus um. Well, er Errol Spence right now could be fighting Manny Pacquiao because I'm hearing that Bob Arum has put a hold on the Terrence Crawford versus Manny Pacquiao, which was supposed to go down at some point this summer. Now they're saying that's on hold. And they may have Pacquiao fight Errol Spence now instead. Into him, right? right. But, but when, but again, we're, see, so that's another fight that would have been one of those because there's, those are two guys that have the names, let's say, to withstand. But now we don't get that. And now it's pushed back. And now we got to switch out names. We got to do this. We got to do that. If we're, not going, if we're not going to get two guys in the ring that are both known, it's going to be hard to compete with Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis with those two names alone. Even because even people that don't know Mike Tyson from boxing, guess what? They watched the Hangover movie. They saw Mike Tyson in that. 
or they watch this comedy special or they listen to his podcast. So you, you know who Mike Tyson is, even if you're not an avid boxing fan. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like even, even like my, my, my people that will watch a fight with me, they don't know Teofimo Lopez like that. And you know, he's from Brooklyn. You know, I push, I rep for him hard cause he's from the borough, but they just, they just don't know these guys yet. He's not built up enough to withstand. And then if you have someone who is one of the top dogs in boxing, but it's not known like that, going up against an opponent who damn sure ain't known like that. And he don't even have the resume uh, you know, all those, all those belts like a Teofimo Lopez does, it's going to be harder to compete. Whether or not this kid is a YouTuber, guess what? Mayweather got enough juice in his name to, to, to be a bigger draw than Teofimo's fight, than Canelo's fight combined. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like his name no, is- No, that's a fact. So it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna be rough. But again, if, if it's something that can be fixed, if boxing says, we are going to give you the fights that you not only want, but that you deserve. And we are going to put the top guys against each other. None of this, oh, it's gonna take us six months to negotiate and then nothing happened. Then we're gonna go yeah. another year. Then we're gonna to get to five years like a, a Mayweather Pacquiao fight took to actually. Yeah, happen. I believe today's the anniversary, the, the six year anniversary of that fight too. You see? So it's, it's, it's hard to compete if you're not putting out the best product. Nobody wants to see a seven game series in the NBA finals with the Nets versus the Sacramento Kings. Who, who, don't nobody want to see that. No, I mean, but that, that's, I, the Kings, I, but you want to see the top level guys. Right. But I, I get, I, I get your point. I'm saying like in terms of other sports, obviously the players control that situation, right? Cause a little bit more. there's been times, right. This we were robbed of a potential Kobe versus LeBron finals before, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that was kind of out of their control. Cause they teams just, couldn't get to that point. But, and my thing is, I'm not mad at the exhibition fights because you're absolutely right. Floyd Mayweather has built his name to a point where he deserves that attention, right? He was the premier boxer in the sport for, you know, over a decade. He deserves that. Same thing with Manny Pacquiao. But what I, what I don't like is that there has now become this rush to let's cover the exhibition as opposed to the, to the good product. Canelo Alvarez against Billy Joe Saunders is a good fight. This is to unify the super middleweight division. Canelo Alvarez has gone up in weight from originally being a welterweight, uh, you know, going up to middleweight, now super uh, to super middleweight. Yeah. So my, my, I guess my issue is that there's opportunity to promote some of these situations. Teofimo Lopez, still very young. When he beat Lomachenko, it was a shock to a lot of people who aren't on the boxing scene. Yes. But again, like you said, he still has time to develop his name. But we have, I think, a situation where when you look at some of the bright young stars in boxing, these promoters have to do a better job of promoting them because <laughs> we've seen Javante Davis, who's a young up and coming star, fight for free on ESPN, the same as Teofimo Lopez. There's no reason that you shouldn't be pushing that harder because you're not asking people to pay for that. All you got to do is put it on ESPN. Damn near everybody got ESPN on their cable, uh, you know what I'm saying, package. So that's what I mean. You, you've got to, I think you've got to find an equal balance. I agree with you. Mike Tyson, unfortunately, to some people, he's just a sideshow. To people like you and I who love the sport, we know him for what he what he was and then what he became as a man. But to a lot of other people, like I said, they only know him from the hangover. They only know him from biting the air off. They only know him from getting arrested. So it's a circus. They'll tune in, even though they know it's not going to be a great fight. They just want to see if something crazy is going to happen. Yes. But the same way that we willing to, to, and not us, the promoters are willing to push that product be willing to push some of these young fighters who have a lot of talent, who, again, a free fight is nothing but just turning on your TV. Yeah, well, and, and, and they're not doing their job. And, and, and they're not doing their job on the promo end. And they're not doing their job of booking the right fights. And it's just crazy, to, you know, just to go back to Bob Aaron being the person that says that the fight is dead in the water when we've had conversations with the great Iran Barkley, five-time world boxing champion, who spoke about not getting fights that he should have gotten during his day, you know, with one guy in particular, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, and guess who was the promoter in charge of that situation? Bob Aaron. Yeah. And I mean, we, we've heard the, the same rumblings, obviously, because Floyd was under Bob Aaron at one point. That's why he had to branch off on his own. And it's crazy because Terrence Crawford, after his last fight, was saying, either give me the best or let me go. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So it, they, I, it, we, I think we're on the same page. They've got to do something about it, man. And I, like I said, I don't mind the exhibitions because I'm a watch. I'm a huge Floyd Mayweather oh, fan. Oh, I'm, I'm a watch. This Tyson Lennox Lewis fight. Right. I want Tyson to win this one. <laughs> well, we'll give our predictions when that time comes. Smush Parker here, formerly up to Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Real talk, we as real as you thought.